Hello, robotic students. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about your code for your minefield robot. You need to pull up your code that you used for your grid bot or your torque bot, uh, and it may look a little bit something like this. So you're going to need to do some modifications here. Uh, you should have on there some pragma statements up here. If you don't have them, then shame on you because you've done something incredibly wrong. Oh, by the way, I'm wearing this wig for absolutely no reason whatsoever. I would like to point out that I am currently operating this video and recording it on Mac while still accessing the PC side of the laptop, which is blowing my mind. It's parallel universes coming together for this video. It's nuts! So, what we have going on here, your pragma statements up here, you should have. You don't have, in that grid bot or torque bot code, the ability to make your robot drive. So you can put in these simple codes here. What's kind of clever, my robot was turning too fast. So the joystick were uh, too powerful. They're going from 0 up to 127. So all I did was I put a divided by two things here. And so now it can only go up from 0 up to half of 127. Pretty clever. Make that happen. Pause it. We'll talk in a second. As you hook this up to your minefield robot that has its own crazy lifting arm, suddenly your arm is maybe not lifting to the right height anymore based on this code. And that's because your potentiometer is going to be reading different values because you just installed a brand spanking new potentiometer. And you want to check and see if that is reading the right stuff. So you need to remember to go to debugger windows and then go here to sensors. Now mine's not active because I don't actually have a robot here with me at home. You have to start your code, then go to debugger windows, and then look at sensors and read what it's saying down here at the bottom about uh, what value your potentiometer is at. Now also, you may not have a limit switch on this robot. I don't really think you need one. It might be a nice thing to put, but you can make your potentiometer control how high up it goes and high down it goes. So what you're going to need to do is get rid of this limit switch, unless you have one, and replace it with something very similar to what you have up here. Now I'll leave that to you and your partner to figure out if you can stop it from going up, you can probably imagine it won't be too hard to put something similar here to stop it from going down. And once you have those things in there, that should be it. You're solid. Woo! But Mr. D, my potentiometer is broken. Wah, wah, wah. That's probably not the case. Check up here in your pragma statement and see if the potentiometer is installed in the correct port. Uh, one thing I see a lot is people put it in one of the sensor ports. Well, they put it in the motor port, which is dumb. Or you put it in a sensor port, which is okay, but you put it in a digital port. And a digital port is for something that's either on or off. Your potentiometer is more clever than that. It can go through a whole range of variables, which makes it an analog uh, sensor, in which case, it should be installed on the analog side, and you should have it configured as a potentiometer uh, up here in your pragma statements. Also, check that your motors for driving sides and your arm are in the right port as well before you become complaining to me about your robot is broken. Have a good day. Woo!